All right, welcome back to another uh, training video. Gonna throw up on the YouTube channel, uh, Tyler with SciTech. Uh, we're gonna make a video today covering another Trimble SiteWorks function. Um, today we're gonna go over calculating a stockpile volume. It's a pretty cool feature that I've gotten a lot of requests about lately, so I figured I'd go ahead throw together a video. Uh, it's raining here today, so we're just going to run it on the computer on the SiteWorks emulator. Go ahead and double click on it to open it up here. Running version 1.43, uh, just released recently. There's a couple cool things going on with it. Uh, as you can see, demo license expired, so we're going to run in emulation mode. So I threw together a project called the Stockpile Training Project. Uh, we do have a design loaded up. Uh, we have a surface that we are, you know, getting guidance to. What I am going to do, so calculating a stockpile volume. So you can take your GPS rover, um, go out, shoot a couple topo shots around the toe of your slope and the top of your pile, be as detailed as you want to be, and you can go in and calculate the volume of that pile. So going to kind of show you my process for doing it, a couple different ways you can get through it. First thing I do when calculating a stockpile is I create a new work order. As we know, work orders are where our points get stored. So I'm going to go ahead and we'll call it stock, what I can type, stockpile one. Go ahead and load that up. I don't have to have a design loaded up. Uh, we'll, you know, We'll, we'll do it once without one, so no design. So you won't see any site line work. We won't see any surface model. It's just going to be control points and our rover. So I'm going to go ahead and use my rover, my SPS 986, connected to a base station, channel 1, our emulator base station. We're going to have our quick release on. Go ahead and turn tilt compensation off and we will leave our antenna height at 6.562 feet. Go ahead and fire it up. I'm not going to do a project calibration, but here we are. So here in the emulator, I've never really been over it before. Um, the elevation doesn't really work out. So what we're going to do, you know, if I zoom in on me, I'm going to click around, you know, you can see my elevation stays the same. So what we're going to do is we're going to just manipulate the rod height to get our elevations to change. So stockpile. So I'm going to assume here on my imaginary job site that I'm standing next to my pile of material that I want to calculate how much, you know, how much is there. So my process for doing this is we have to create a volume boundary. You can shoot points. I can press the plus button right now and shoot points all the way around my imaginary stockpile. But for the time being, I'm going to go ahead and create a volume boundary. I, ca I can create it later if I want to, but right now I'm going to go ahead and I create it at the beginning. So right here is my measure type. Right now I'm set to create points. If I click on this, I can rename my point. Um, my show every time, if I want to see this every time I create a new point, measure a new point. But what I'm going to do is go up here to new line. And right now it's set to break line. I'm going to set this to a volume boundary. And we'll call it stockpile boundary. And I can't go any further, so we'll leave it at stockpile bound. I'm going to press accept. And now when I move around my stockpile, yeah, you'll, you'll see it'll create a line. So I'm going to shoot point number one. I'm going to move a little bit. Create point number two. I'm going to continue around my pile. Say it does one of these. Come back up. And that, that's it. That'll be, you know fastest stockpile ever ever recorded um, but yeah so we don't have to you don't have to move back to your your starting point you don't have to get close to it or anything the system will connect to this point to this point once I 
turn off the function. And it looks like if you're running the advanced measure function, you can actually get a closed boundary feature right here. Can't remember if that's an advanced measure upgrade or not. But there is my volume boundary. I have shot the toe of my slope. Next step will be to create my stockpile. So I'll have some some high points and some, you know, some higher points, some lower points. And one thing that's kind of cool is if I zoom in, if I swap to my 3D view, I can see that that I'm right here. Cool feature of SiteWorks. Can see in my plan view, you know, my panel swap button as I like to call it. I can swap back and forth. So I do know I'm on my 3D surface viewer. If I swap that to the big screen, this button right here over on the right, you know, I've got my zoom in, my drag to zoom, my rotate, my zoom extents. But this button right here, call it the overlays or surface selection, sorry. I can turn my measured surface on. And now we get a good view of the volume boundary that I shot. So if I had a design turned on, and here, we'll go ahead and do this. Let me go project setup, change project, and we'll turn on the design with the surface model. I am running a VCL, so I have to tell it which surface I want to get guidance to. But as you can see, let me center on top of myself. And I'm way down there. Elevation six. Zoom in on myself. So yeah, I can I can tell it, you know. Much like I broke my emulator in the process. sure what happened with that design but yeah I can I, I can tell it you know which surface do I want to get a measurement to and my measured surface is my stockpile is my work order points so now what I need to do is I need to I'm going to just adjust my elevation to zero and watch my elevation now I'm at elevation zero so I'm a little bit higher I was at negative six earlier so I have raised up. So now I am back on shooting points and I'm topo one. Remember it doesn't create points until I hit the plus button. So I'm gonna name it, you know, stockpile one. Hit accept and there's my new point. And now look at this. My stockpile is starting to take shape. If I rotate it around, blues are low. Reds are high. So I'm going to shoot one point there. Shoot another point here. And that will, you know, conclude my stockpile. You know, we're shooting points now. We did our volume boundary. Now we've shot our topo points. The topo, we basically performed a topo at the top of our stockpile. So, there we have it. We've shot our volume boundary, shot our topo points. So what this volume calculation is going to do right here is it is going to calculate this flat volume boundary. It will basically slice it at the bottom, and everything above the volume boundary will be considered a cut. So I know nothing is lower than my volume boundary, so I, I will see no fill number. Nothing is below this volume boundary. So let's run the calculation. So to run this volume calculation, I'm going to press the menu button. I'm going to go to COGO, and I'm going to go to review and edit data. And I'm going to compute my volume. That's the default. And it's telling me to select my boundary. And it asks me if I want to close it. I do want to close it. We'll say yes. And remember, it's going to calculate the boundary and everything above it. Scale factor, if you want to put you know, an expansion value or a shrinkage value in, you can do that right here. But I'm going to go ahead and press accept. 
And as I was saying, my expansion factor, remember I left at zero. My total cut volume came out to 400 cubic yards. My fill volume is zero because there is nothing below my volume boundary. And there's my, my net cut balance, you know, my net balance is 403 cubic yards. It gives me an area. So that calculates the area of that volume boundary, a perimeter calculation. This is all data you can verify. But my, my, up here at the top, I can rename it. I can call this, you know, stockpile one, or if you've got a material type, you want to call it. Another cool thing is I can press this clipboard and I can create, generate a report. And what we'll call this stockpile one. I can comment on it, give it a description, basically. And I can, you know, we'll call this, you know, YouTube training video stockpile. Calculation, if I don't type. I can add photos, so if I press the camera button right here, it will allow me to take a picture with my data collector. Now that camera finally becomes useful on that data collector. Um, I can hit this checkbox and it will open the location after I create it. So when I hit save, it is going to open my location. So it, you know, it opens my synchronizer data folder, my job, my work order folder. And if I double click on this, there is my stockpile report. Nothing fancy, but it's a nice PDF. I know you can get a header put in here. Um, but yeah, pretty cool. Hit accept. And it does write it to the log. So if I hit my menu button, go to data management, and go to log, hit last, and there's my volume calculation right here saved in the log. But yeah, that is a stockpile calculation. Stockpile calculation. Hard, hard word to say. Um, so yeah, let me know if you guys have any questions. Uh, let me know what you think about it. Uh, good luck measuring those quantities you, you never you had to call the surveyor out or took a guess at. Thanks for watching. See you next time.